Okay, so now I have a gessoed board, and I also wanted to show you another way to make uh, this stencil. It's a you know different kind. This one's made from Mighty Board, which I've talked about before. Mighty Board is a very um, nice weight of plastic, and it's again the weight of like poster board, so it's very easy to, to cut with an X-Acto knife. And you can make your own stencils, and I've made my own here. Uh, the sheets of it are 18 by 24 sheets, and um, I have a link on my in my resource section, um, and you can you know you can find it, and it's it's just nice because it's it's going to hold up to things like spray paint or acrylic, and um, anyways it lasts a long time. So what I'm going to do here is this is um, a Baltic bridge panel, 1 8 inch thick, 12 by 12, has gesso on it, and my idea to show you the stencil transfer is to lay down a pattern. Um, I'm just gonna lay it down here and use some red, cadmium red spray paint. So I will be wearing a respirator. This is a 3M, made by 3M respirator with the right kind of filter for volatile organic compounds. So you wanna make sure that if you're dealing with a spray um, that you have the right kind of cartridge. And if you're ever in doubt, when you go to a hardware store, say, I'm going to be doing this, and they'll be able to help you with the type of cartridge you need. So I'm going to spray this, and I'll be wearing my mask. Okay, so now um, this is an acrylic spray, and I'm not aware of um, oil-based spray paints, so I stick with the acrylic. And this happens to be a cadmium red medium hue, and there are certain pigments that, you know, you really have to take even extra special precautions, and cadmiums are one of them because the pigment is a heavy metal, and you just do not want to inhale that. Um, so don't, you know, if you're ever dealing with dry pigment or sprays like this that are cadmiums, I mean, first of all, I, I try not to use any dry pigments at all of any kind because if you inhale them, they're really harmful to your health. So anyways, um, this is what my base layer looks like on this 12 by 12 inch panel. You can see it's kind of glossy right now. So I'm going to let that dry. Okay, to review, here is the stencil that I used with the red spray paint. And I cut this from the Mighty Board and can reuse it again and again. So I'll put that aside. The spray paint through the stencils, I took a Montana marker here and I made some marks with that. And this was the Montana marker that I used. It's an acrylic marker. They come in different sized tips. So this one that I used was like a half inch marker, but they come in, you know, wider and narrower. Uh, that's up to you. They also have refillable cartridges that you can use. So I really think that's a great product. Really nice coverage. It's really solid. Here I had a stencil that I sprayed with black spray paint made by Liquitex. And here is the original stencil for that. This is a hand cut stencil from a Japanese kimono pattern. I think it went like this. Yeah, right about there. So that's where that one was. This is just newsprint and you know the spray paint is just so lightweight that it really didn't even um, affect the stencil too, too much. I mean I could definitely use that again which is really great because it was a very complicated stencil to cut out by hand, you know. Um, and this is just newsprint. And then I wanted to also use a store-bought plastic stencil. Um, you can get these anywhere. And I put that one over here. So that's where that one was. And, you know, this may seem like a lot of work to go through. But, again, this is kind of an experiment for me. I wanted to try this and... Here's another stencil that was right here. Let's move on to the next step then. Just keep these stencils over here. And Okay, so this, this is all dry. I had to let that dry. So I like to have a cutting board handy. And this is my, that's basically 
I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. It's like a self annealing cutting mat and they come in a lot of different sizes, but, and I have got my ruler, my X-Acto knife, it's quite sharp. And I'm just gonna start to cut out various portions of my stencil transfer here and see how it goes. It's really important that it's dry, of course. There's a certain sense of, I don't know what I'm gonna get, which I love. It's kind of like, um, just like when you pull ceramics out of the kiln and they've been glazed and you don't know how the glaze is gonna come out. In the same way, when you make your own stencils and your own stencil transfers, you don't quite know what's gonna come out. I mean, there's a certain amount of clarity to this and a certain amount of um, kind of amorphous, like this in the middle was not very clear, but I like the difference between a crisp edge and an amorphous edge. So I'm gonna just keep cutting uh, just various different pieces here, not paying too much attention to, you know, what what's getting included, what's not getting included because I can always cut these down further. I'm not, again, I'm really not thinking. I'm just cutting. And for me, again, it's kind of like you're back to the play stage because I'm not really trying to overthink this. I really just want this to be fun. For me, this is fun because I get to play with a new element here. I really like this really big shape, so I think I will cut here. Okay, so I've got a couple components here. And this one here that I've cut so far. And I mean, these are all kind of, you know, about the same length, so I'll probably mix that up a little bit. Here's another piece I like, I really like, well, I really like this. This is kind of a fun shape here. Um, might just give it some hard edges here. Just kind of randomly cutting things out according to what I like. This is made with a Montana marker. Okay, there's another piece. And then I love this kind of thing that was also done with the Montana marker, so I want to get some of that. Um, grab this, and I mean, even this little piece here could be useful. There's that. It's really fun just to make your own collage material because sky's the limit and you have so many materials that you can use. It's just a matter of, you know, what do you want? And if you kind of just look at it as make a whole lot of things that you, you love, whether it's texture, mark making color. Okay, there's another piece that I can use. All right, and now this is the fun part when you get to adhere it to your actual painting. Put this all aside and I'll set it here because I might want more of that, but you know, for right now. And I don't really have, you know, this whole thing about what don't I have. So the other thing I could do is cut out kind of a circular form here. I don't really have anything like that. Is a curved shape and I really am going to need that because I have got so many rectilinear edges set up here. So let me just cut this out. Okay, there's that. And maybe I'll just, I, I also, well, let's just see where we're at here. I've got a lot of pieces here. Let's take this out of the way so you can really see them. And these are just all kind of rectilinear forms, but then I've got this one curvilinear form. So take my Again, this is golden gel medium. I'm gonna use a brush because I want it to be kind of an even thickness. And, you know, what do I wanna do? But see, look at, this is the cool thing because you can see through it and you can actually see where you're placing it. And, and I can kind of just move it around. Like, I think I like it here. So let me start with that. Put this um, gel medium down. I wanted to kind of line that up with the edge. And I'll do that now. I just want to flatten that, spread it, grab some either newsprint or tissue paper, really anything will do. Got some freezer paper here, so just want to make sure that I get the edges down really well.
Now you will sometimes see some wrinkling happening. Those are just like air pockets underneath, but you can, the beauty of this is you can see through it and you can kind of push any excess medium out from underneath it, but in the end, it's really not gonna matter. So I'm gonna let that part dry. Just try some different things here. So this guy, I'll put this in the corner. And again, I just have really, this would be such an early stage in the painting process that I'd say, okay, this is really just being very playful. Not trying to overthink it. It's kind of like make a quick quick decision and just do it. And don't worry about anything. You can, you can do no wrong. There's not a single thing you can possibly do wrong here. And you're really just playing. So this is part of play for me, having these wonderful stencil transfers to play with <laughs> and okay, there's that let's get out any air bubbles if you happen to see any and then I've got this this cool calligraphy here I think the greatest advantage of these is you can see through them it's really kind of cool so yeah I can kind of see how this would go up here maybe or even like with this straight edge here you know it could be kind of cool um, either lined up with that or it could be lined up with this. It could be like that. So I'll just throw this down here. I'm not going to use all these pieces because what I want to do is overlap. Part of the, the reason why I think this is a great advantage is because when you attach this with the gel medium here, it has a certain thickness and when it dries and then you keep overlapping these types of stencils, you get a greater and greater uh, feeling of depth. And in the end, that's what I like. That's what I like to achieve in a painting. So that's why this is all very consistent with the process of layers, layer upon layer. So why don't, I'm gonna just let these set up, these layers, these first initial stencil transfers. We can kind of reassess, see what we have, and then figure out, you know, what's missing or what don't I have or, you know, what would be fun to add to the mix. And I'm just going to take off this excess polymer medium so that there's um, less that needs to dry. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. All right, so we're back to this panel that had these stencil transfers upside down and I was waiting for them to dry and I think that they're now dry enough where I can peel this paper away. So I grab my pair of tweezers and here's a close up. Just grab it and you can probably even do this without a pair of tweezers, but once you lift off that edge, you know, it just releases very well like this. And, you know, there it is. It's transparent and you have, you can place it anywhere you want it. I think that's the advantage here. So take this one off. Um, what I really want to do, though, is start to really overlap these stencil transfers because I think that's when you start to get layers, um, this feeling of depth and perspective. So here we go. That didn't take much effort to make that come undone. Here's that. And there's a gel medium that's still drying. When it gets completely dry, it will become clear. But for now, it's still um, in the process of drying. But, you know, if I let this sit overnight, it'll be fine. And here's that crazy calligraphy. And I can overlap again. I could even overlap it over this. That could be kind of interesting. Or offset it like that. Maybe I'll just try that. And you know, you can reposition them once you put them down. Until it's completely dry, you can keep moving them around. You could lift them up and move them around. Um, this actually doesn't even have to, I think, dry. Maybe it'll just completely release. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. 
So between stencil transfers, paint transfers, and image transfers, you know, that's just, uh, that, that's a lot of options you have. And again, it'll look different once the gel medium dries, but you can kind of see how you can layer things and get a lot of depth. Just really just for getting the air bubbles out. You can see I lifted up that edge and then just keep pulling on it like this. It just releases very, very easily. And when the polymer medium gets a little thin, you know, yeah, it might tear a little bit, but that's okay. So there you go. I think that's pretty cool. So I call these stencil transfers. So I hope you have fun with that. Have a lot of fun with spray paint, stencils, paint transfers. Thanks everyone.